Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Adobe Live here on Behance in the UK. Um, it's so good to have Holly with us today. Our Hello. Great expert. Hello, Holly. Hello. How are you? <laughs> How's I'm good, going? thank you. Yeah, I'm really good. It's good to be doing this again. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so good to have you back because, of course, Holly's been on the US stream. And so amazing things are being done with self-portraits. And I can't wait for everyone to see what you've got in store today. Um, and it is a good day. Autumn is in the air in the UK. I don't know if everyone else is feeling it, but I'm loving it. And there's already talk about cake in the chat. This is only going to make me hungry as we chat. <laughs> Honestly, this is good. It's so good to see so many familiar faces back in the chat as well. Hi to Jackie. Hi, Sanjana, Andreas, Sean. And of course, Tim is here as well, of course, managing everything, um, you know, to make sure the stream is a success. Um, if you all want to have questions today for Holly, get them into Behance. We're chatting there. So we're chatting in behance.net forward slash live. You can also watch this in YouTube. But of course, the chat is all in Behance and we'll continue in Discord after that as well. Uh, so Holly, I mean, I would describe you as a self-portrait just rock star. Um, <laughs> the work that you do is amazing and I'm really excited to see this because I've tried to do um, self-portraits using double exposure and things yeah. like that and I've seen some of your work um, and I'm sure Tim will share your Instagram and your portfolio in the chat to everyone go in there and have a look but um, yes. you know what have you got in store for us today? Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah so I am um, as you've just so nicely put it, a self-portrait artist, a digital artist, and I just love taking photos of myself and creating different worlds out of dreams that I've had and different ideas that I've come up with whilst driving my car kind of thing. And I like using lots of stock imagery and uh, playing around, around with backgrounds and colours. And this is the type of style of work that I do. Um, and yeah, I've done like projects over the years where you know I've, I've got a project called seven days of holly which i've done where i i shoot a self-portrait a day and create one image a day and a video to go along with it a behind the scenes video um because i have a youtube channel as well so i just wow. create loads of different um i, I suppose ideas that just come to me in the, in the middle of the night <laughs> in, my, in my dreams <laughs> and i like to create worlds that are quite abstract but also um I think open to interpretation. That's what I like to say. It's so good. I mean, you've got so many images there. Some of the really fairy tale, and and as you say, some like the burning hair. There, um, yeah. amazing picture. Um, yeah. And, so, and you're using Adobe Stock, are you? Like, or so you know, any yeah, stock yeah, stock any stock images, images that I can find, and and yeah. like just. I mean, this was part of my seven day project as well, but. Um, so it was like one of those images that I had to edit within a day. It's like just a challenge that I've got with myself that I have to f uh, film and photograph and edit and then upload within the day. And so it just, the ideas sort of come over over that day and then I've got to move on to the next one. And, and it, yeah, it's just a, a great way of like, I suppose, forming a nice style because I like to pick out mm. the ones that I really like from the week and then work with those again. Um, but yeah, the I, I've been really loving colour at the minute. Um, I used to be quite, I mean, as you can see down here, these more muted tones, but recently I'm loving using um, colour and just going wild with it. And just, I think just for a bit of fun and with like everything that's going on with the world at the moment, I just want yeah. everything to be a bit more happy and colourful. Yeah. It's so good. I mean, I, I just love it, honestly. And these are, I, imagine having these as your profile pictures. And, you know, <laughs> like, honestly, we all need something like this, I think. I did change this one the other day, because this is the one that I did for the Adobe Live um, a couple of weeks ago. Then I've got a, a project called Three Facts, One Face, where I take, I'll show you a second. I take um, pitch, people's faces, and then I ask them for a, so during lockdown, this was a project that I started. Um, and I'll take people's faces, their facts, and then just merge it together and sort of create from what I think would make a good image. Um, so like this one, she had, I've, I've explained this on the past today, but so if you've watched that one, you can go have a look and um, listen to it there. But like she had a couple of children that one was a bit younger, one was older, and she liked, you know, mixing styles and things like that. So I used the sunflowers for that. And then this one I did wow. me. So you can read, you can go have a look and read my facts. Um, but Yintzy, she liked Greek mythology, so I included all that. Um, and then Josh, he loved um, dragons, so I included his dragon tattoo. 
Um, and just, yeah, this one's funny. She wanted to be a pilot, so I think she's in the US. She works in the army, maybe, in the military, yeah. um, as a photojournalist. So I sort of wanted to include that sort of idea that she, her dream was to be a pilot one day. And she also loves alligators, so there's an alligator on the head. <laughs> um, oh but God. yeah, so that's the kind of, like thing that I do I just take people well, I took people's faces and worked with them during lockdown because right. it was quite hard to sell take self-portraits at that time I think it was a bit I don't know I just sort of didn't want to put the camera on me I wanted to get connected to other people in the world so that's mm. what I did and where did this come from like this these ideas are amazing to you know I mean where did this start I don't know I, so I I used to take self-portraits in my room when I was about 14 like I was just playing in Photoshop at the time and and just really just I don't know I, I used to just sit I had got a Wacom tablet so I'd just play around with it I think for my 16th birthday and I just really like loved manipulating things changing things I didn't really know what where I was going with it it was more mm. um just playing I just used to play and then I thought I think I've just brought that into adulthood now and and use that as like a way of like challenging my skills in Photoshop and just yeah. playing with like all the different elements but yeah I I went to university and did photographic arts at uni in London and um and then I just sort of went full-time photographer after that um and I do shoot weddings as well so that's sort of my full-time kind of not yeah. movie at the moment but <laughs> um, yeah so I do that as well but then this I do a YouTube channel so I just teach people how to um create imagery like this and I love it this is where I've gone with it it's so good. And so talk to me, like, do you have a studio in your house or is it really simple setup? Um... Yeah, so I, I'm currently sort of renovating a studio at the moment. Um, it's in the process, but I have always worked out either like a bedroom and made sure that I've got a specific space to use for creating self-portraiture or working with models and things like that or mm. you know like anything that I'll always have like an area where I've got my lights and everything set up um and obviously all the set like Mac and everything set up ready to, for me to just jump on and edit it um so yeah I do work out of I've got a specific space like here I'm in my like little office at the moment but we are like renovating a studio so that's going to be fun because I'm going to have a, a, a curved wall so I can actually just set up lights and things in there. But I tend to use natural light mainly, but um, as you'll see today, because I'm going to be showing you a, another image in my flow series, which is this one. Um, I'll, I'm going to explain a little bit how I shot this with the light situation, because obviously I'm a bit backlit here and everything. So yeah, I, uh, I just use what I've got available, but then also kind of like sometimes use a bit of artificial light here and there. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's it's so good. And you've got, of course, I know that Tim shared your profile, uh, your portfolio, your Instagram. Um, where do you get the most kind of um, work or uh, I guess requests for portraits? Would you think it's through Instagram or is it more through your portfolio? Mainly through Instagram. Um, de yeah, it's definitely through Instagram. People just message you through there or, or email me through there. Um, but yeah, mainly through there because people, I just tag everything, um, make sure that I'm posting regular. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I think people see it and just see it as a more of a portfolio on there um, mm -hmm. and then just go from there. I love it. Honestly, I can't wait to see your process uh, and get into yeah. it. The, the two apps I think that we're showing today are Lightroom and Photoshop, right? Yes, they are, yes. Uh, so I've been working with, I'll just, I'll just explain this for a moment um so this is i have always loved wearing head scarves and scarves and like different types and colors in my hair and and over lockdown um i sort of was experimenting with that a little bit more and like i love the flow and the idea of like how the materials all like intertwined with each other and um and especially with like different lightings and everything and my uh, sister's just had twins in January and, and her little baby's called uh, well it's a girl and boy Reggie and Flo and they Flo absolutely loves material so it sort of like stemmed from there because I was had my headscarf in my hair and I was like flowing it about and she just absolutely loved it so I was like oh, I just love the, like the reaction that I got from that and everything so I sort of channeled that into this piece um but I, because I like I have a collection of scarves I thought why don't I just start just doing this on more images and try 
try different ways and just just the movement of it so mm. I photographed my second favorite scarf which is this yellow one um and I've got some I love flowers and garden I just love garden it's just my favorite thing to do especially like with everything what's going on at the moment going out in the mm. garden is like one of my favorite things to do and um yeah so I took a loads and loads of stock imagery of my um of all the flowers in our garden last year so I've got like an abundance of that so I'm just sort of incorporating it all it's all into one little project and it's something that I can carry on doing um mm. so yeah this is what I've got so far I did a bit of a setup because I thought we've only got an hour I need to like make sure that I get through this a bit bit quicker mm. um but I started with an image I don't know if I've got it on here actually this is it that one uh one of these ones but basically this is in my bedroom <laughs> I've got like a, a pinkish wall but it doesn't matter about that because I was cutting it out anyway mm -hmm. um, and then I've got a light sort of coming from the back of me which is a tiny little window and then I've got a light from the front and it looks quite dark at the moment but when I get into Photoshop and, and sort of lighten it up put some yeah. um, you know the brightening dodging burning and everything then it'll it'll feel more like um, bold and bright but so I took that image image and opened it I think I did a little bit of a different one. I don't know why that's not open, but anyway. Um, and I added, I'll just take, get rid of all of my layers so you can see. Um, and I've wow. been really, really loving textures at the moment um, and adding them to the background and, and creating like, it looks like it might've been taken in a studio, but it's also not, so I quite like adding that yeah. real effect at the back but as obviously this um this scarf is going to be it's obviously like a golden color I wanted to start with like a really nice like a golden yellowy like this is a bit muted at the moment but when I add the colors at the end that's when it all like sort of merges together mm. and how do you um, begin like this uh, obviously you said that you love the scarf and um, you love the colors of the scarf do you draw out your ideas uh, pen and paper first or do you just go straight into the shoot? So this one in particular was actually quite a, I do generally write out, out all my ideas so I'll have like a bit, I have a big book where I just, in the middle of the night if I'm, um, you know, just waking up from a dream where I'm like this is a great idea I'll write it in. Um, so I have like a big book of, of like five years worth of ideas but this particular image sometimes I go through a bit of a stage where I've, I've not shot for a while or I've not created and I just like to play like go back to like when I was 14 in that bedroom just playing with my self-portraits and I'll just I'll just go play so I actually just had this um uh, the this one I had the uh, scarf in my hair and I was like it'd be quite nice just to see what it would look like if I was like flowing it around so essentially I just stood in front of the window got into position and then just captured it and then played around after and I wasn't intending on adding all of the flowers and everything but um it just happened essentially so then when obviously I wanted to expand the project I kind of had another idea of how it was going to work rather than having to write it down and like you know really work it out some of the ideas that I do I have to really like work out and make sure that I've got every element and aspect so like I'll show you um like the paint on the head one this I needed to have clarity on how I was going to shoot the the because this was all shot I didn't use any stock imagery here um so I needed to know where it was going to be so by I just basically draw like a step by step of what I need to shoot to get this yeah. image and so um, Gareth asks do you have mood boards collections do you do lots of mood boards do you know what? Uh, yes, I have been doing more recently and I've been doing more mood boards. I don't think that I haven't got any to show, but on my iPad, I've been uh, sort of doing a lot more colour palettes. So because since doing the Flow series, I've been enjoying creating with like colour and like complementary colours. So I do a lot of like mood boards around that um, and like the colours and how I'm going to what what maybe what stock imagery or stock flowers I'm going to use and everything yeah. uh, so I have been doing about that a bit more recently and um, but I didn't yeah. don't tend to do it it's usually just a pen and pencil a pencil like yeah. drawing just quick sketch and then I'll go out and shoot it yeah no good yeah. everyone it's what's so good about Adobe Live is that you hear so many different people's processes and well, most of them start with pen and paper always yeah yeah I think that's like 
the interesting thing is that I always have oh it could start with a word sometimes I'll just I'll, I'll be driving along or you know walking down the street or whatever and I'll just like oh that that word would and then then I have like a word in my head um that I'll sort of always reflect back to and then then something else like I see a color palette or I see an object that I know that that would go with and it's just like a it's like a mass equation it just all comes together and then at the end you've got your piece essentially uh, so yeah I'll just start editing this um so I've put everything into place at the moment um, just some, you know, I've been playing around with different um, pieces of material. So these are the images that I took of these material, this material. Um, Gareth asks, um, when you do write things down, do you mean sketches or is it more of a list of preparations and things that you need to get ready for your shots? Yeah, so I'll do a, a quick sketch and it could be, um, for example, I'll show you actually on the, the three facts, one face one that I did. Um, this was the sketch that I did quick. So we're talking really super fast. Uh, I like it. I like to now add a bit of color. I used to just do a pencil drawing and it'd be really super like stick man. Um, but this one, I really wanted to know the composition wise and how to shoot it. So that's how I did that. So I suppose um, I do. Yeah, I do do more in depth sketches now. Nice. It's good to see them. Yes. Yeah, so we'll um, have a look at this one. I've add, I've added in this this uh, flower, which is a rose from the garden. I think it's a rose. It must be a rose. Um, and it was a nice yellow colour. So I thought it'd go really nice with the um, gold of the scarf. I love that you've captured all of these images yourself from your own garden. I love yeah, that you're using that. I, I do love using stock imagery. Like I said in the previous streams, I do love finding stock. It's, there's nothing better than using like a stock image offline, online or whatever, and then um, it really fitting into your work. But for me, I think I like the connection of the fact that I've took the image and um, I've got a massive bank of stock images. So if I show you on here, so I've got like, uh, I mean, I've got all like backgrounds. I've got animals, chairs, my face, feathers, fire. I mean, this is, a, we had a fire recently um, in the garden. I don't know if it was gonna come up, but I just took loads of pictures of like the fire so that I've got stock images. Um, I just like the idea. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like, I suppose, painting a picture that is all, all like authentically from you mm. rather than, but don't get me wrong, I love using um, all kind of stock imagery. It's just that this, for this, it's more yeah. personal to me. They're yours, completely. It's yeah. completely you. Everything is, yeah, I love, love it. Um, so with the other image, I did quite a few different roses and I quite like um, the idea of just adding loads of different ones. So I'm going to dupl duplicate them all and have a play around. And I think the best thing about using yourself in these images and your own stock photography is that every time a creative idea comes to you, you can just act on it and just keep, you know, pursuing projects yeah. and keep going, right? Um, exactly. So yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I think more recently as well with knowing how to deal with a creative block is kind of... Um, the way that I see it now is that like I've got a big stock of images plus a big book of ideas so I kind of I'm like right if you're having a feel you know, if you're having a day where you just feel so creatively blocked and you can't create go to the book go to the stock library have a look and then I sometimes just sit there and create stuff and I, I don't often like it I just do it and then the next image is where you know, like I'll just bank that one, put it put it to one side, and then the next image, I've got like a new way of thinking about like creating. Mm. It's good to keep going. And there was a few questions for you. Um, oh, Carlos okay. asks, do you send stock images? No, but I have been thinking about this recently because I think, yeah, I think because I've now got a big bank of them. Um, but then again, it, it, it comes like, 
they are mine and it's personal to me, but then maybe I should just, you know, let people have, yeah. have them and see. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll do that in the future. I think that's probably something that I'll have a think yeah. about. Become a contributor. Um, and then Gareth says, um, do you shoot the images from your phone or a DSLR? They are, it's, I shoot with a Sony A7 III. Um, I did shoot with a Nikon um, D750 DSLR and then I changed to a mirrorless last year. So um, I, I have shot sometimes with an iPhone, a stock image. So say if I'm out on a walk and I see a texture or I'll see a, a, an unusual flower or plant, I'll take it with my iPhone and then I might be able to use it. Otherwise I would go back and shoot with a DSLR or mirrorless now, so yeah. yeah. And uh, Jackie agreed with your comment earlier on about you know definitely needing to create a lot of uh, bad art or different art to get the good stuff. Exactly, um, exactly. And I always promote that. I think you should never ever give up on on you know, like a piece and then just forget about it for like six months or whatever and then start again. You should always continue. And that's why I'd started, like I mentioned at the beginning, I do a seven day project and I do that every, I've been doing it for the past three years um, on every six months. So it'll be like an October and an April. Uh, and I'll shoot so that I've got, basically, I was going through a really creative rut at that time when I first began this project and I wanted wanted to experiment with things but I didn't want to feel like I don't know like stopping myself from making um something because I didn't like it so or like I'd feel like insecure about it so with a seven day project you've got no chance or no choice to have yeah. to like go on to the yeah, next image then yeah. What I say, I, I always promote this, I think, and I've got a hashtag if you want to go and have a look, it's hashtag seven days with Holly. Um, and loads of people joined in on with me on this project because I think they also noticed the fact that you've got no choice again to really move on to the next one, but you also build a good style with it because you get to know what you like. Yeah. So I've done about, I think I've done six and this will be my seventh in October. I'm doing another one. Um, and yeah, I'm... I picked out the images that I like from each one and now use them in my portfolio and now use them for what I want to create in the future. Um, but yeah, that's just the way I suppose I work. Nice. And do you know, I've got to ask, because you mentioned at yes. the start that you do a lot of wedding photography. I do, do you, yes. The people that book you for, you know, the, their wedding photos ask you to create this kind of self-portrait with flowers and things like that as well, or do you not? I've had... Uh, so I've had a couple, but what what happens? What tends to happen with clients is that they'll book, they'll see that I do this art, or they'll find me through it because they're interested in art or photography or digital art, um, and then they'll they'll notice that I do weddings. So then they go, oh, that's great! Like she does weddings as well. So I'll you know invite. Her. I know I'm the creative side of things, but she also shoots very traditionally um, wedding photography. So. Uh, People do ask me to do fun stuff, but it's harder on a wedding day. It's like easier said than done because on a wedding day, you've got like lots of moving parts, loads of different things to focus on. Um, so if we were to do stuff like that, then we'd do it in like an engagement shoot or um, yeah, just play yeah. around with it. You get more time. And I guess it's even longer to wait for their wedding photos if you are going to be adding these extra things. And yeah, they, got married, they want it now, you know. Yeah, I know. And I always stick to like a, a certain amount of time at turnaround. So mm. if someone asks me to do it, then it'll be just a, bit, a chargeable extra. Um, but the wedding, you know, like people invite me just to because I think they are in, they also obviously see the wedding work and see my wedding portfolio but I think they just notice that I'm quite attention to detail in that in that respect yeah um, so I suppose that's the, the selling point for my work yeah um right I've just got rid of that background but I think that looks loads better now without this little bit here yeah um just gonna play around with the flowers a bit more and how long would a, a project like this take you so this image here from start to finish from setup so, everything uh, Okay, so usually shooting time, so I'll go based on this one. A lot of them differ depending on the moving, like the parts and how much I've got to shoot. Sometimes they can take up to two hours to shoot because I've got all these different elements, but I'm quite an impatient person. So I quite like to get stuff done really quick and, and um, within a certain time. So usually this one probably took about half an hour maybe to shoot. Um, so then I'll edit it and it'll take potentially uh, anywhere between like six hours or 
12 hours depending on how many days I spend on it sometimes I can edit it within a couple of hours like the seven day projects I make sure that I only shoot things that I can really edit within like three hours um so yeah it depends I suppose it I suppose it take could take a couple of days yeah and um I have so many questions for you but I want you to carry on with the yeah <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> keep, keep asking I'm just gonna keep keep putting a lot but so I've just noticed actually this one um I mean these this changes all the way through but I've got mainly like a base of how I want it but I'm just going to like move around some of these material bits I need to go in as you can see I'll just zoom in and just I'll remove that little flower which one is it that's what I should do I should name all these flowers but I don't <laughs> um I just need to add uh, sorry take away this bit so that it looks like it's joined to the back of my head or back of the scarf um, and are you using your wake on tablet now to do this yes i'm using it now um i do have an ipad which i've just started using photoshop on uh, which i did actually edit the flow one on uh, so the the previous picture which was that one mm -hmm. um but i had i did open it up into photoshop just to finish off this all the shadows because I think um it's easier to like zoom in and really see on like a big IMAX screen that's what I use um to get to get in and do all the shadows yeah Catherine says um great style so detailed oh thank you I appreciate that I think that's it that's what uh, like my keyword of the year is detail that's a good word so Gareth asks, um, any masking or user tips in Photoshop from you? Um, cutting out can be an art itself, especially with hair. Um, hair, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, um, as you can see here at the top, um, it might, I might just add some back in here. This is probably a bad example, but I can explain it and you can probably use um, what you can from it. But with hair, I tend to approach it very messily. Um, I'm just going to add some of this back in um, either really messily or I just cut it out and just ignore it and leave it. Um, but like on this image, the three facts on face one, I had to cut out all of this. So if you are interested in how I did cut out all of this, you can go have a look on the Adobe Live a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I use this tool, which is the background eraser tool. It's a really simple tool. Um, and it is, um, it's non, it, you can't undo it. So I'd always recommend duplicating your layer and starting editing on another layer. Um, but basically you put the tolerance are about, at about 20% and you just sort of play around with just pressing on the background. And as it's you can really, see, um... Oh, sorry, sort of, I was just gonna say, as you can see, it's sort of erasing the background, but keeping those little detailed hair there, hairs there. But I was gonna say it's a bad example because they're not quite sharp, these hair, this hair. Um, nice. I was gonna say Tim was excited about this. He put, yes, background eraser gang. Yeah. Um. <laughs> There's loads of different ways you can do it. You could do it with channels. Um, you can add a, you know, and. There's another another long-winded way that you could do it with channels, which I'd highly recommend having a search on YouTube for. But I just prefer this way because you feel like I don't know. I feel like I can control it a little bit more with my. Yeah, we did have an update. I think it was at, Ma at Max last year for um, it was the subject mask tool. It was object mask, and we were able to I, I instantly cut out an object, and it was quite good with hair and and. Um, you know furry objects like yeah. bears and things like that um and I, yeah yeah that's the good thing yeah because like bears and animals they all need like cutting out um but with this one um i'm just gonna use the soft round tool i'm just gonna clean up like the edges a bit of it it's worked really well sandrine says um when i'm cutting hair which i do a lot um, I sometimes use the smudge tool on a mask to mimic the, the strands of hair. Yes, that is another thing. So um, I do actually do that. Um, I'll get 
this is a bit of a different way, but I'll get the hard round pressure size brush. And I'm just going to test that size that's too big. Um, and I'll pop it on probably about six, five or six pixels, maybe a little bit less. And then I'll pick up the color of the hair and I'll just add in some textured hairs. I mean, obviously this, with this image being out of focus, it's a bit different, but you can add in like bits of hair there. I need to get rid of that background then. Gareth um, <laughs> made a good point. He said, it's the necessities for bears. <laughs> <laughs> very good Gareth very good uh, Sanjana says dodge and burn also works yeah good oh, to yes. see in the chat really good um, this is so good yeah so many different ways I mean that's the thing it's limitless with Photoshop you can do it in so mm. many different ways um, but yeah I'm just going to remove most of this because I did want it just to be quite like a little round bun at the top and for the shoots that you had, Holly, where you're standing in the fields, there's a gorgeous picture of you in like a like a meadow. Um, is that a professional mm -hmm. photographer that comes out with you to do it, or do you kind of set up your your camera and then it's a point and shoot? That one. Was there, it this, one, this one? Yeah. So this one, actually, my partner Jack, he have sort of trained him up to become my personal photographer. I suppose you, you could say it. I tend to do all of mine by self. I'll put set up a tripod timer um, and I use my phone with the app and I can um, focus and change all the settings on there but with this one because we were we actually went to Scotland and um, we were driving through the Cairngorms and then um, we sort of saw this like amazing view obviously it's an amazing view in Scotland anyway but like everywhere was just amazing so I was like jumping out the car in five minutes so it's a bit easier for Jack to shoot it that way um, and I had like a few different I mean this one sort of came along I think there was I've got it there as well so we did a few different ideas oh wow um in the same area so that I had quite a, a ton of photos to edit uh, when I got home um and different ideas but yeah I don't if someone's there to shoot and press the shutter then I'll happily like let them do that and I'll but I think I like I do like to have control over it so it's easier to because obviously if I work with my partner it's easier for us to communicate that to each other um, and he's learned how I how I work and stuff, and um, but yeah, it's good. It's good because yeah. he's there and he's interested. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're just over halfway now. Time is flying. Oh, wow! Um, if, <laughs> if anyone in the chat has questions for Holly today, honestly, get them in the chat. We're chatting yeah. at behance.net forward slash live. If you're watching through YouTube, we're not chatting in YouTube. It's all in behance. So definitely get your questions into Holly. Amazing. Um, yeah, so what I do, I mean, obviously, I'm going to spend time, a lot of time on this. Um, but what I would do is I'd go through and obviously I'd do all the shadows behind me um, and all the shadows on the um, flowers and everything like that. But what I want to do as well with this is that because I like to keep my light images quite, I, I say realistic, but it's obviously not realistic because it's not something that you can just shoot outright. You have to put it together. It's, it's pieces in a puzzle um, but I think I like to create it so it has like a bit of a realistic dimension to it so I think with adding shadows to the background rather than it being just a collage on top of each other I want it to like merge into um, it like I suppose on the this one you can see where I've like added the shadow and it kind of looks like they're there but they're not but obviously um, so I'm just going to go in with this one and I've noticed I need to find that that one. And you mentioned that your um, your nieces love scarves and the joy it brought them. It, would you kind of do something like this with them and get a picture of them? And, and the I would love and... to. Yeah, I think That's when great. they're a little bit older and they can start because they're only eight months or nine months nearly. So, yeah. but they're getting so much personality. It's so nice to like watch and see them grow. And especially mm. like at this time, it's like everything's so polarizing obviously you've got to be family a little, I mean um, you know you just you just noticing it, the growth I think from yeah. the more because you're focused on it and I think that's what this year for me is about is about reflecting you know how we as humans grow and um, seeing them go from being a baby and, uh, to like they're going obviously going to go be into toddlers and it's just so nice I just love it. 
Yeah, it is a nice time. Imagine, I mean, as, as a, I'm, I'm a parent, I've got two two little girls. And yeah. I would love to have a picture of them with this kind of, yeah. you know, I some think, of those normal portraits, you know? Yeah, I think like that's um, when I have kids as well, which is probably not going to be for a few years now, but I think I'll probably be roping them in on, on, the, on this. Hopefully they'll be up for it first and then they'll see that their cousins did it when they were younger. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to rasterize this one. Uh, I'm going to blur this one a little bit so because I just want it to sort of sit onto the image a bit a bit more like it's sat on the scarf that's how I'm thinking about that I need to go around and just tidy up these edges but yeah and then I'm going to add a bit of shadow And you mentioned that you know that you're really into the detail. So, do you actually find it hard sometimes to step away from a project and and let it be rather than keep going back? Yeah, I think I used to be um, like a like with the seven day project and the pro and the and the way that I used to work was be really super quick. So I'd sh shoot and edit and in like a day or however long. But more recently, I've been finding myself stepping away for a couple of days and then coming back to it and a lot changes and it's surprising because you before when I would just shoot and edit and get it out really quick or um although it'd be I'd be satisfied with it um I you don't know what the, what the limit would be to that so like whereas now I know that I can push myself a bit further with it and see where I'm going so although it's good because it's obviously I, I'm getting a lot of detail um and focusing on the detail it's also a lengthy process now, so I'm, but I'm quite enjoying that at this time because I've got more time to do it, so. Yeah, it is having the time. And as I said, you know, that your work doesn't have to stop because you, you're all set up yourself. It's you that you're, you know, you're, you take yeah. the images, you've got all of the stock images as well, so you're, you're set Yeah, up. that is something that when I started my, I suppose, becoming this artist and the style that I've got, um, I didn't want, I'm like I keep saying, I, I used to be really quick and snappy with it. So I didn't want to have to wait until someone accepted to be a model and then shoot, like create a day where I needed to shoot it. I just wanted it to be there and then. So even like, I don't, I'm not like fascinated with the fact that it's me in the image. It's just more the fact that I know that I can just quickly get on an outfit, yeah. quickly do this. And then, um, plus it, I mean, it has helped a lot with confidence and self confidence issues that I've had over the years but I think like it's I, I look at myself as more of I know this sounds slightly odd but like more of an object rather than it is me in the image it's more like it's I don't know like I don't know how to explain yeah. it other than the fact that it's more objective not rather than like I'm worried about how I look yeah it's art yeah it's, it's yeah completely um hey Gareth is a good question um okay. And it's just disappearing in the chat and you grab it. Um, it says here, I assume that you're working in RGB for all of these images. Yes. Um, you are. I think so. Um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, um, Gav says, um, have you had trouble converting to CMYK for prints? Um, and do you consider prints? Like, do you do, you do prints? Yeah, so I do prints. Um, I personally haven't had much, uh, I suppose, experience with this. So I, I'm not very good at like the technical side of things. So I kind of just, I mean, I suppose technically in Photoshop I am, but when it comes to like the printing and what that, you know, the pixels and inches and stuff, you know, all that sort of stuff and the DPI, to me, I'm just, I like open a canvas and let it go. Um, so I'm not particularly, I don't know, I'm not really experienced on that. Um, but when I have printed my images, they've always seemed to have come out, I suppose the printers that I use, um, they come out the way that I like it, and that's I suppose, the best way that it can be. Um, yeah. So, yeah I'm sorry, I can't any? answer that really. Oh no, don't yeah. worry. Have you printed any? Do you have any of your images on your walls? And if so, I do, but they are in front of me here, so I can't oh. turn the computer around. <laughs> um, and I've started selling prints as well of my work, so you can go to my website and have a look. But um, yeah, I think it's just it's this has been sort of a learning curve this year, just trying to like figure out how I want them to pr be printed and what I want to be printed and how far I can take it. Mm. 
Yeah. Well, Gareth says that, um, that you know these would make really good prints, and you're using a DSLR, so the images would be high res. Be quite, yeah, amazing. And yeah, I want to say hello. Um, oh, sorry, Holly. Um, hello, hello, everybody in the chat from MSU. We've got lots of MSU students in the chat today. That are oh, hello. <laughs> um, I think from all around the oh. world. So we've got yeah, a lot of people to say hello to. That's interesting. It's so exciting because like. You just get, to, I suppose, in this world we're in now, like seeing loads of people. Like I did the Adobe Live a couple of weeks ago, and there were so many people from like the Philippines, and it's just like so interesting that I'm just sat here in Doncaster on my computer. <laughs> so good, so good. Oh, Sean says with the colours and contrast, print on metal would look great. Ooh, I think that would. Ah, uh, do you know what? I think I'm going to start experimenting with with printing and different materials. I did a lot, because I, I, I went to college and did like an art sort of uh, mixed media um, like course. And we did a lot of different types of printing there. But I think when I went off to become, I suppose when I was doing weddings and stuff, I, I mean, I've been printing, but never experimented with the type of papers that I'd, I'd print on. So that's something that I'd be definitely interested in doing. I could see like an image, um, you know, the image of you with the scarf and the flowers, uh, with the blue and the yellow. Yeah. Um, I could see that on like a Herbal Essences shampoo oh, yeah. bottle or like on a big billboard for, you know, some kind of botanicals. Do you know what, that is, that's made my day because I, I feel like, you know, when I create my work and I don't really can't see where I could, where it would be placed in. But for you to say that, I think that's sort of what my aim was, that hopefully one day that I can be on a big billboard. <laughs> Oh, definitely. I can really see this, honestly. Just get in touch. Say, hey, because yeah. yeah, you've got the flowy hair as well in some of them. Perfect. Yeah, right there, right there. Huh? yeah that'd be cool. Maybe I will. I'll reach out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. Sanjeev says, any Kenzo perfume advert? Yes, because they always use flowers, right? I don't know the name yes. of the flower they use, but they really, yeah. Yes, they do. Is it, is it pop, Poppy or is that another one? I think, I don't know, but yeah, I can, oh yeah, I can definitely see that. Interesting. I hope you can hear my little puppy in the background. I'm trying oh, to see. they've woken up. <laughs> He's woken up. Oh, I like dogs, so I don't mind. So I'm just playing around with the flowers here. And I might add some behind my hands there. So I'm just going to lower the opacity and then I'll use the lasso tool. In fact, now I'm going to use a poly lasso tool. I suppose the other, the, you know, added bonus of, of taking photos of yourself and not using a model is that you don't have to worry about those kind of release forms or any of yeah. that side of things, you know, especially with stock, you know, stock imagery. And so, yeah, you're. I think that sort of, I mean, as an artist that I, I, I kind of like scares me all that stuff. So I'm just like, well, like if I can avoid it, then I'm just going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, no, it doesn't scare me, but like, I just feel like where where do you place yourself in that? Um, it's just a lot easier just to use yourself from my point of view anyway. There, so I'm going to do that. Although I do, I do really want to shoot this series with some models because that's another thing why I shoot self-portraits is because I'll do the image that I have in my mind with myself. I know then that I can do it then I'll get a model involved um, and shoot it uh, just so that if it did go wrong, I haven't got to let anyone down. <laughs> It'd be good though with models get makeup and hair and yeah. kind of, you know, glamorous and dreamy feel to it. Do you know what yeah. I can also imagine? Um, you know, like um, the Snapchat filters that put the eyelashes on you and the makeup and things like that. Imagine yeah. having a, a filter that had a scarf wrapped around with yeah. flowers. Just, just put yourself straight into it. Like, I can see your work right there. 
Yeah, I'll have to I'm look at that. Ideas today, honestly. Yeah, I know you are. You're really giving it. To <laughs> I'll keep keeping me coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think I need to have a look at Snapchat filters uh, or Instagram filters as well. Sean says, Art Director Maddie. I'm totally getting on board with this. <laughs> I love it. Keep it going. So I'm just cutting out that flower. It's a bit it's a bit light now. So I'm gonna take that down and create a clipping mask. What tips would you give people? I mean, I know you said that you do the YouTube tutorials and you've joined a few of the Adobe Lives. Um, but what tips would you, you give to people getting started with this type of photography? Um, I would suggest definitely trying to sort of put your, I mean, you don't have to put yourself in it because that's, I mean, it's just the way that I do it's my style. But this type of photography just, just requires practice and a lot of it. So I'd say, just like I said earlier, that you just need to do it even if it is bad and then move on to the next one, do it even if it's bad, move on to the next one. And then all of a sudden it will just start coming to you. So this kind of photography needs um, patience and um, I suppose like practice. I, that's such a cliche thing to say, but I think with that, I've been doing Photoshop or using Photoshop for the past like 12 years, maybe more like 14 years now. So I've got to grips with how things work. Um, plus, like maybe, like again, join me on my seven day self portrait challenge and do that, or a seven day challenge that you've got to shoot something every single day just so that you've got it, you know, like to practice. And it's that's the only week that you can do it. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's what I would suggest. I'd also yeah. look at other people's work and how they've used this type of imagery in their work and try and stand out from that rather than go with the flow and like copy in or I tend to take elements from a lot of different things like films and um in fact a majority of my ideas come from watching a film and how I can interpret that into my work um, and other artists that do inspire you uh yeah I've got a few but so I, I mean I've got a few like self-portrait artists that I look up to like I've got Joel Rob Robinson and uh, Rosie Hardy she's a friend of mine and uh, then there's like Adam Bird who is also a friend of mine he does a lot of fairy tales so I, I look to a lot of different types of um, work but then um, I also love like illustrators um, I've got loads of different illustrators that I follow on YouTube and watch their like studio vlogs and stuff like that because that's something that interests me just like the behind the scenes of things um, but those, is, I suppose I've got like a bank of, if I'm feeling a bit uninspired, then I will go to them and just, you know, get lost in their work and see how they've worked. And um, I suppose that's how I do it. But yeah, I've, 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 over the years, I think I've just changed a lot in style. But um, yeah, I've got the core artists that I follow that I love. That's always good, isn't it? It's, it's lovely sometimes just to get lost in somebody's work and just really just trawl through it. It's, it's the scrolling and just sitting with a cup of tea and having a good look. Yeah, I, yeah. When I first started, I would do that for hours and like just read everything that they posted online. I mean, I'm in this, the world of, of, I suppose, expressing yourself online. So that's where I my work sort of fits in is that it's an expression of me as well as being, you know, an a distant object of myself it is still me and how I, I work a lot of my emotions into my work um so seeing other people's work and how they put their emotions into their work and how I interpret that I think that's what I like about photography and the way that I shoot self-portraiture anyway mm. and then one thing that our creatives have shared on Adobe Live is that during lockdown a lot of our creatives have revisited old work and repurposed it or redone you know some of the older images that they've taken at the start of their career yeah um, is that something that you've done or want to do um I there's a few ideas that I I've really really wanted to reshoot I think mainly because I'm like I could do that better now um or I have got that like in my head where I'm like maybe I could do that a lot differently or I could just evolve that idea a little bit more so for example the the paint head one um with the paint on the on my head 
this one. I can see so much wrong with it editing wise and I know that I could create it again. So I feel like there is, but it's because as well, this was so hard to shoot that's sort of making me, it's like a super challenge that I need to do this again. Um, so yeah, like I think I'd do different colored paint or, um, but I did this, I shot this in January and it was absolutely freezing. And then the paint just like, oh, I had to have it on my hands obviously because I was trying to like mold it and things like that. Um, and I just got like almost frostbite on my fingers because it was so cold from all of the the pain. But yeah, um, there is a few things that like I would, I would like to reshoot, but I tend to have so many ideas that I've got in my book that um, I feel like going back and reshooting things would sort of like take away from the new ideas that I've got to going on and I'd have just too much to do. <laughs> yeah, that's so good though. You've got all these all these ideas. I love it. Um, Sean asks, how are you going to deal with uh, different depths of field? On this one, is this what? Yeah, so I'm going to, so what I do is I'll tend to um, match all the planes into one like I was doing earlier with this flower. So I've like blurred this one a little bit, um, but I don't tend to mind too many different depths of fields with this. Um, with the other one, it felt like it worked. Um, but there was there's more movement to this one rather than like the depth of feel like the behind like the the scarf behind it. This one feels like it goes into into one. Um, but I'm not sure. I feel like the background now is going to have to blur more a little bit, and then I'll probably have to stand out a bit more. Or I might take away the back bit, the back the back scarf, depending on depending on how I feel about this. Nice. I think it's interesting as well because the other one sort of came from nowhere um, and this one came from there, it came from that one. So I was sort of recreating that one but with a different scarf. So this one is going to be a bit tougher, I think, to edit because I know and I've already had it in my mind what I was going to do. Um, but yeah. I feel like Have I'm you ever thought gonna... about... Oh, sorry, Holly. I'm just no, jumping in. I'm so yeah, interested. That's it. So no, go questions. for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you ever thought about reworking older paintings? So doing something like the Mona Lisa um, and adding, you know, a, a scarf and flowers. Yeah, and like yeah. You, I'm going to go away and write all these ideas down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. I'm going to follow you on Instagram after this. I know. Honestly, I'm loving this. Um, but yeah, no, I think I... I about that as well but I've got so many ideas that I need to write down that I'm just like I like it would be a project that I think would take quite a lot of um it'd have to be quite successful so mm. it would take a lot of my time up um but I think that's so interesting or maybe yeah, yeah, a, yeah. there was an way yeah, oh, definitely do it in your way and there was definitely uh some spark projects oh no stop sorry projects that I saw in YouTube that Adobe did. Uh, and I think it was an artist called Anwar and he recreated some really old images using stock photography and put himself actually in the paintings. And there was like I, a- Yes, I think I saw that. It was, a, and they made a video about each step, right? About how he added the stock imagery and it was so good. Yeah, that I was, yeah. Up. Yeah. I did see one a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's the same guy. Must, maybe it was, but he did a huge, this, massive painting from nowhere and it well from obviously all the stock imagery um uh -huh. but it just looked uh, incredible but that's i think i love now just like building stock and uh, or like creating stock so maybe if i was to create recreate an image i'd try and do it with like my own images yeah and and spend a few months maybe gathering all the different elements yeah um yeah, but we'll definitely. see that'd be really that'd be really fun though sean um <laughs> says in the chat make it pop <laughs> for me to say, it's like I, I am this art director all of a sudden I just... <laughs> have you ever done any <laughs> no but I'm going to now <laughs> yeah oh, I love it love it you can be my you can follow me around and give me all the ideas <laughs> <laughs> yeah Tim's decided make the logo bigger <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> bring in the bears you know that'll be next <laughs> yeah love it yeah, Tim says, more cowbell, less techno kettle. <laughs> getting random that now. techno kettle. <laughs> oh, 
my gosh. Oh, it's so good to see this process, though, and actually just see how something can come together so easily. And that's really just a few images of the same scar. You've got you in there and just the stock photography of your flowers. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, this would this is just very simple base of what it would would come out like. But I need to spend hours and just go around and doing all this, the shadows and spending time doing it all. But I think yeah, I, I do like add, like adding and taking away and seeing what can work. And like you say, go away for a couple of days or a day and just come back and being like, yeah, that works, that doesn't work. Yeah. And when you work with people, Holly, um, yes, do you get a brief specifically for like the types of colours and, you know, is there a palette of colours that you're set to work to or is it more, you know, just we need this and off you go and make it? Yeah, so most mainly I've been, um, I mean, I'll show you a couple of bits of work, actually. So I worked with this band called Bang Bang Romeo um, and they are, I went to school with the main uh, singer, uh, Anna. She basically approached me and she said, can you just do me some images? So these are the type of images that I sort of took from their style and how they are as a band and I put it into sort of what they wanted so essentially they were like you just go wild and I was like okay so I just went away and had loads of different ideas um but this is the I mean we had a brief so that we had the colors obviously of her, they were they came with all the you know like they had, had stylists and everything so they had um what they wanted but they just wanted something that would reflect their band so although this is very different to what I'm editing now they still you know they I wanted to reflect something that they had about themselves and they're very you know they're a rock band and things like that so very um, cool loving the smoke but, I love the colors yeah the colors that I think because it was quite it was a February day so we had quite muted tones going on but then the, the pop of turquoise loved it but I think with usually with any other client um I suppose it's a collaboration isn't it between you yeah um, and yeah the colors differ uh, on every every single thing every single job um but yeah i could just awesome. go on for hours doing this <laughs> oh honestly i could watch you <laughs> we could carry on i gotta come up with the ideas honestly i know <laughs> <laughs> we've got Three minutes left, and I, I think I oh, have it. As well. Wow, the time was blown. Like time is just flying by. Um, wow, we've got three minutes. If anyone has any last questions for Holly today, yes, get them in the chat. We've had great questions so far. Um, yeah, yeah, and I will be. I'll fin be finishing this one over the next few days, and hopefully post it on my Instagram. So, oh yeah, please, it'll do. be on there. Definitely, um, it might it might be completely different by the time you see it, but. That's the beauty of just practicing and going with the flow. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And it's good to see that you're doing this in Photoshop as well, because this is one of the apps that I love to use. And so I'm happy that I know I'm like, oh, I could probably do this. Yeah. Um, it's so good. So um, what's sure. been your favorite project then? You've got to tell us. What's been the, like, the your most favorite thing you've worked on? Oh, that's hard to put. Say in two minutes. I don't know. There's so many, so many. Um, I think obviously the personal projects are the most my most favourite because it's just something that I've like done for myself. But oh, I don't know. I can't. I can't pick. <laughs> um, this Adobe project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think the seven day project that I work and do personally. That's something that I just absolutely love, and and I'll do it every year until. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm going to be working on a, a Sleep on Fruit series, which I'm very excited about because we're using the fruit from the garden again. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, we've got apples and strawberries and everything. We've got all the different types of fruit you can think of in the garden. So I've been shooting them this week. So I'm going to do that. Um, but it's just like ongoing projects that I've been working on. Chelsea says, uh, keep up the good work, Holly. You're amazing. Thank you. That's, lovely. Oh, that's hey, really uh, sweet. Gareth, that's a good question because I know we've not been in Lightroom much today. And oh, so no, we Gareth haven't. No. Holly work with Lightroom. I do, yeah, but I don't think I've even got time to open it because it'll take a little bit. Um, but I do, I'll, I use presets and I, what I do is I'll, I'll layer different presets on the images um, on, 
on the same image, sorry, and then I'll layer them in Photoshop and just play around with the colours in there. Um, so it's, yeah. We should do another live stream on Lightroom and the and what oh, you're doing I'm there. so up for that. I would definitely love to do that because that's another process in itself that I love to do. I think that's a, another thing, like when you're sh uh, editing this, the, the, you know, the final step is to open up in Lightroom and do the colours. So is it Lightroom first and then Photoshop or the other way around? Photoshop first, then Lightroom. But I always, I use Bridge actually to pick all my images. So I'll open it up in Bridge and then pick all my images, Photoshop, then Lightroom. And then I will take into Photoshop to finish off and, and like sometimes sharpen and things like that. Um, add some depth maybe into like some contrast yeah. and stuff in Photoshop. Fab. Well, yeah, we definitely need you to come back to Adobe Live to show us the yeah. next stage of the process in Lightroom. And um, Holly, it's been amazing having you here today to share this with us. Your work is really wonderful. Um, Thank you so yeah. much. I've it's really been, enjoyed it. And thanks to everyone in the chat. We've had some great questions today. Yes, um, you've been amazing. We are here at Adobe Live every day, every weekday from 12 till 1 p.m. We've still got some great sessions planned this week for you. So definitely tune in same time tomorrow. Um, and we'll see you all then. Thank you, Holly. And bye, Thank everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.